So we're just going to a small opening. We're, we're going to um, find somewhere we can just camp out. Whether we see any animals or not, I don't really care because I feel like I'm about 10 again. And just with a mate in the woodland, it's just fantastic. It doesn't get any better than this. Staring competition, and we lost. But um, I didn't think we'd see deer, but we did, and that's amazing. Let's hope and fingers crossed that we can get close. But we're the wrong in the wind's blowing this way, isn't it? <sighs> I've, this is just. I've got goosebumps. <laughs> that was. Um, <laughs> I've got a lot of adrenaline pumping now. time we're going to just stop here hopefully and the wind's just going round like that so hopefully we're gonna the deer that have gone gone away now hopefully they'll come back and we'll be able to shoot them just on the other side but that is hard so much harder than the blind what's amazing is the you know these wild deer that don't see people so often are so timid and you can go down to your local park and you can see deer and get quite close to them, but getting these wild deer is really hard. But I wanted to say something about, you know, what I've found so far with wildlife photography, why I'm, why I'm doing this, because I think, you know, there are a lot of similarities in photography. Um, you know, we're still trying to find a subject. We still need brilliant lighting. We still want to um, compose it really nice or in a location now where we can shoot through some leaves. And the timing in wildlife photography is what it's all about. But there's lots of differences as well because, you know, whereas we don't have to dress up like this, but, but you're, you're, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to capture behavior of the animals and trying to capture them a little bit off guard so they're not looking at us and that's so interesting and in a way in landscape photography although you know that's not different I, I like to capture the behavior of the weather on the landscape and how it interacts with the landscape and you know gives me that mood which is which is so interesting but I feel like I'm I feel like I'm you know, improving as a photographer by doing something a little bit different. It's really, really exciting. And hopefully I'll get some good photos as well.
So we're back in front of the fire, which is fantastic. And we're just about to get some coffee, which is the number one priority in all types of photography, I've found <laughs> out on this um, trip with Morton. Um, so this morning we were, as you saw, uh, uh, trying to find the roe deer and the red deer in the forest. And just to show that wildlife photography isn't easy and there's a lot more failure than there is <laughs> success. Um, I got an out of focus bottom of a roe deer, which is about <laughs> as good as I got, <laughs> and um, completely missed the, the red deer, even though Morton was saying, there's a red deer over there. Um, but I did get the video that you, you saw, so yeah, it was, it was, it was yeah. tough. It happens to me all the time. Yeah. It's not just you, it's, it's like that. It was, it was so hard, and, yeah. and, um, and I think, again, relating it to landscape photography, quite often, even though the conditions look good, I know I've got the right location, the mountain isn't gonna move, mm. I'll get there and then s something just won't be right. The, you know, the weather usually doesn't, just, just, just doesn't work. But you've got the added complication of the weather being, it was good this morning, it was raining, but that's quite nice. It was a nice yeah, atmosphere. It, look, it looked really nice in the, in the, in the woodlands yeah. and we had the rain coming yeah. down. We just missed, there was just, a, we needed a deer there. We needed a deer, <laughs> that was the most important. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but it, 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 was, it was really difficult. Um, but I, I think one thing for me and that I, I found that was really, really great was it I, just inspiration. I, I found that I, it really inspired me to think more than just my landscape photos. I mean, I, I, I do remember we were walking through some really beautiful woodland. I think they were beech trees and it was, it was so atmospheric and, you know, and, and actually I'd forgotten a little bit about landscape photography because I was so focused on that deer. But then when I looked back, I thought, wow, this is an amazing landscape shot. Just imagine if there was a deer there. Yeah. And, and it's that environmental, you know, it's that, it's that capturing that animal in, in nature is so exciting as well. Yeah, it, it, it would have been awesome. But uh, I, I, I also feel sometimes I see a beautiful landscape and I think, oh, oh, I would like the buzzard to land on that little branch. It'll be awesome. And then, you know, I see the buzzard landing on a, on, a, on, a, on a pole somewhere, but it's not so nice, just with blue sky. Yeah. So what, what I wanted to do a little bit is just chat um, about equipment, because I do think that everybody what, what, watching does think about that. And, you know, we've, we, we, you've shown me some of your amazing prints, which are just Thanks. unbelievable. So I wanted to have a look at these two prints and then talk about another photo. But before we do that, just talk a little bit about, about the gear. So I, I was using this, this 500 millimeter Nikon f5.6 lens, um, which is a, a new and I, I'm really lucky to be able to have this. And but I but I know that I've not done a lot of wildlife photography, but I've taken some with my 70 to 200 with a teleconverter. But then you've got this, and I'm like, you yeah. know, I see your lens, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 you also saw how heavy it was and how oh, difficult it was to carry around. Yeah, and you and and we we were talking a little bit about this, and you. And I think it was interesting what you were saying about equipment and how equipment isn't so important to capture the moment and why you have that equipment. Mm. So I think it'd be good to just know that. Yeah. I just speak about that again. I just want to start it out, not to, to make it too long, but just I remember when I was just starting photography, I had this what is called VHS tape with a National Geographic photographer. And I, I was sitting there watching again, again and again and again. And he always said like, he's like, it's not about the equipment. It's about being there photographing. Mm. And I thought, yeah, that's right. You're carrying like a 500 and a 600 <laughs> yeah. and you have an assistant to have the other one. How can you, how can you talk mm. about that? But I, I, I just realized that it, it is like that. It, mm. it is not about the equipment. Of course you, you need a camera and you need a lens. Yeah. But the only, like I've been shooting a lot of great photos sure. and published photos taking with my Tamron 150 to 600 which is like, a, what is it, like a tenth or fifteenth of the price of this. Yes. And the reason why I have this big lens instead of maybe this lens, I would love to have this lens. I just can't buy any lenses on the market. Yeah. But the, the only reason why I have this lens is because looking through my Lightroom, shooting with a, with a zoom lens, I see I always, always max it out. Yeah. On, on the focal length. Mm. So I need like five or six centimeter yeah. plus converters. Sure. And because many of my photos are in very low light in the forest, I just need the biggest possible aperture. And that comes in a lens like this. And 
like this and you pay with you pay with a weight sure and also this is like extremely heavy duty built so that yeah, I need and you to go buy to it. amazing yeah. locations i say amazing but uh, i mean extreme locations yeah. don't you and yeah. most people are not going to need that no. that, that no. quality of no. lens it's you know it's more for the how rugged it is yeah as well as that optical quality exactly isn't exactly it? but the optical quality i I don't need this. No, no, you. I, I could. And we'll like, we'll show some things in a like, minute, won't we? Yeah, yeah. but like the, the Tamron 156 on is fine for me. It's yeah. not because of that. It's not know, corner yeah. sharp. It's not about yeah. that. It's only about that I need when I go to Elsma Island, I go to Norway or Greenland. I just need to know that water is not coming in. Yeah. And it can. It's banging around in a boat yeah. or something. Sure. It, yeah. And the only reason I have this is because I make a living off it. I would yeah. never buy it otherwise. So so for me, it's. Um, I would say, it's ten times better. To use the camera you have, if you have a, a, a 7300, if you have 15600, use that equipment instead of sitting there dreaming about the big lenses. Mm. Because you, you, you I, I think 95% of the time your, your image will not improve that much. We can, we can see that in a moment. Yeah. Taken with old equipment, and yeah. still good photos. So yeah, it's just instead of using all this money and and, and spending time on wishing for for the big equipment. I spend the time out there because that's what's make the photos. It's exactly what I say with landscape photography as well, and 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 it's difficult when you see they see people like me and you having this, but it, but I you know if I look back at my photos from from you know 15 years ago mm. where my equipment wasn't very good, it mm. was cheap equipment. They're some of my favourite photos. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's have a look at some of these photos yep. then. So there's this one which is absolutely stunning. It's so amazing if I can get it up here. So, so this. Well, just tell me something about this. Yeah, it's, it's uh, such an amazing it's image. It's from my time in the dog slip patrol. We were patrolling up uh, the northern part of Greenland, and um, I I had the D2X old Nikon camera with a 300-28 with a 1.4 converter. Okay. And uh, it was like 12 megapixel, and then it has an option to crop in, and I had to, uh, to save batteries. I had to like uh, oh, yeah. to save a uh, memory card space at that point we didn't have knob <laughs> and stuff like that yeah. so um so yeah the, this this photo is uh, less than 6 megapixels printed That's just in this incredible size. i know i remember we were just looking at this downstairs yeah less than 6 megapixels this this photo which is just and you you don't look at this photo and think Oh, that's not very many megapixels, do you? No, you no, look I... at this photo and you think that's an amazing photo. Yeah, it's definitely... and and you know it was. It's just a nice situation. I like that. Yeah. So, c can you tell me a little bit more about the photo yeah. and how you got, how you managed yeah, to get yeah, it? Yeah, uh, we were driving on the dog sled and uh, suddenly we could see the dogs were like you know going to one direction and we we used the Greenlandic command so we say like Illy uh, Illy Illy to get them turning yeah. right but they were like and we we're like what and then we saw the polar bear oh. coming. From behind this, uh, yeah, what is it, ice mar iceberg, ice yeah, mountain, yeah. and it came uh, around there, and we stopped the dogs, oh. and I got the camera ready, and I put the 1.4 converter on, uh, on the 300 millimeter, and I was just going a little forward, but without trying not to disturb it, because if if that polar bear had faced me, I, I wouldn't get the the, the feeling of yeah. of here. What I like about this is. He's not paying attention to us. He's hunting seals by by getting on his back leg and just pushing Bang. down. Yeah. And I, I just love to capture. I, I love the simplicity of the photo and then yeah. just him doing yeah, what he does. Yeah, a nice line that will lead your eye in here. Yeah. But, it, but I've seen that with a lot of your wildlife photos that you, that the, the, the animals never looking at the camera because it, it's always it's not like a it, it it's always looking at what it's doing. It's got a certain behavior to it, which seems really important. Right, so we'll have a look at this next yep. one, which is another stunning shot, which just jumped out to me. Oh, yeah. I mean, this, to, to me, when I first first saw this, this is from last year's calendar, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and I saw it on, 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 on last year's calendar. We'll, we'll talk about an image from this year's calendar because I absolutely love it, but, but what, what you were showing me last year's calendar, and this really caught my eye. Yeah. Because it looks like a bit of a, a piece of art. It looks like a it looks like a painting, and I love images that look like paintings. Yeah. You know, it it's just the texture in it. But then when you look at the, how you took it in the settings, yeah. that's really interesting. So just just tell tell me a bit about that, and then you can maybe tell me about you know sh uh, how you took it. Okay. So, it's a 
It's uh, from the project Land Without Sun, where I went to Northeast Greenland to, to photograph two month period yep. where the sun didn't, didn't rise. So my biggest challenge at that point was that I wouldn't have light at all. So I, I bought myself a D700, that was like the, the camera at yeah, that point yeah. for me, because of the full frame sensor. Yeah. So that means that I could go all the way up to uh, ISO 1000 ISO without, thousand. <laughs> without it going totally crazy with the, yeah. uh, with, with the grains. But as you can see, I, I think that's why it looks a, it's a little like a painting, because yeah. it, you see everything just kind of, I don't want to say like, blends together because yeah. it, it, it doesn't manage so to... So most it. people look at this and, and, and if you looked at it from a technical point of view, you say it's really noisy, wouldn't you? Yeah, Because yeah, it's yeah. got it's a lot of colour noise. It's, it's very noisy. Yeah, and there's no sharpness because of that. But that's what makes yeah. the image, isn't it? Yeah. So so worrying about those sort of things, it doesn't matter, does it? Because no, you, I, I don't think about it. it. it I, I think it's different uh, what you want to achieve with your photos. If you, if you want to make like a, a super crisp... Uh, photo of something like uh, I, I think Coca Cola would probably not be happy if I did it yeah, as a yeah, commercial yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But but as as here, I, I we have been talking so much about it. It's about capturing the spirit of the moment, yeah. the emotions, the feeling. Yeah. And I was using that D seven hundred with a two hundred to four hundred millimeter uh, ISO thousand and around I, I think it was a fifty or sixty of a second. So I, would, I was I was fighting with with a quite big lens. Move, a moving subject, uh, way too high ISO, thousand, yeah. and I, I got so many blurry photos. But then this one, where where you see a little movement in the lids yeah. and the shadow, like the the reflection of the light from the snow and and, and the bird, and and you're right, it's it's like from a technical standpoint, it's it's miserable, but it just doesn't change the fact that it's one of the photos I, I like to have on my wall because it brings back a memory from that. It's that just, moment it's so stunning and and also what it what i you know this is the the project you had a land without sun um yeah um and i mean i immediately think it's dark so i immediately associate it with a dark location mm. which tells a story doesn't it so yeah. so that's that's really really important but just also what we, what we talked about with the equipment like i mean this is like a perfect example i think of of course, if, 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 if you like the photo, but taking that camera, like with a polar bear, D2X or D700, mm. it's, it's like, especially the D2X, the ISO performance, the, the, the sensor, the dynamic range is worse than the, 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 the worst. Ca that was a professional camera, yeah, yeah. but you can buy cheap digital camera. Oh, even the, the I, I think the Google Pixel is better than yeah. that camera. Yeah. So it, it's just, I mean, it's, it's not about the equipment. Yeah, yeah. Well, we just want to talk about another, another photo. Before we do that, It'd be good. You told me about a few top tips yeah. when we were in the field, which I just didn't know about, and setup of your camera. So we'll get some more coffee and let's yeah. just have a quick chat about those. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so look, could we have a look at some of the settings that you were showing me? Because I think they were really useful and something that, certainly from landscape photography, I just wouldn't use and I wouldn't have known about without, mm. you know, coming and having a chat to you about that. And yeah. I suspect there's probably a lot of people out there that benefit a lot from them because a yeah. lot of it's been quite quick and be able yeah. to react quite quick isn't it yeah because uh, i think like having the camera it's just just using yours just for the yeah just because one thing that really limits me in my creativity is when i get a new camera mm. that's always also why i think you know it's better to get 100 percent familiar with an older camera than faffing around with a new one mm. And one of the thing is like it's like playing a piano. Mm. If you have to think about every note you play, mm. you can maybe play the song, yeah. but you cannot play it beautiful. Yeah, that's a good good analogy. Yeah, and and with a camera, I in the perfect world for me, it took a lot of time to get used to the sit six compared to the D five because mm. everything is different mm. except from the switch on and off. Mm. Mm. And these settings I'm going to show is just a help for working faster yeah. because in a perfect world your one hand should never leave the focus yeah another finger should never leave the the trigger because yeah. the moment you move that you're not ready and the eye should barely leave here when something happens yeah so what i do is the first thing is when photographing and you take a photo you want like the 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 picture to show so you can check the histogram every yeah. so often yeah then you have to move your hand and you're not ready, you're out yeah. of balance. Yeah. So I because the play button's here, isn't it? Exactly. Um, on, on a lot of cameras. Yeah. Exactly. And um, what I do is here, 
I press this button here, I have a signed instead of ah. instead of having to press here to play, you know, so I it's press just this all one. done in one hand. Yeah, so rather function. than having two hands, that's really good because then you're leaving that hand on focus, which would have been good for me yeah. when I was trying to get that red deer. Exactly. <laughs> because then you don't have to, to yeah. do things. Yeah. Another thing is the other uh, uh, function button here, mm. the function one. I have put that to changing focus mode. So as okay. you can see here, when, when I'm shooting and I press this button, I can instantly with the back, I can change if it's AFC or AFS. On the front, I can change the, 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 the focus, like the yeah. pattern. Because when you are sitting there and you, you have maybe photographed something, you have a, a, one, a, a one little spot mm. and suddenly something moves. In, in wildlife photography, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. So you need to be able to change very fast to maybe uh, auto mode or yeah. maybe the, the, the many spots. Yeah, yeah. And you can do that just with like one click here and then you can one click go back to, to the other one. So that's my second one I always do. Yeah, so that, that's fantastic. And well, I, I would say as well that Morton's doing an ebook and he's gonna give it away for, for free. So that's good news. And I think it's gonna be coming out in a, a month or so, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, um, yeah. So, so, and I think you're gonna put these top tips in there, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. good, good. And this one, in, in the in the photo mode, I have assigned the video record button to like a zoom. That yeah. means that when I'm sitting there, like with the red deer today, auto focus fails and I always go manual. So I have my auto focus here, uh, my AF off here. That means I lock auto focus. I do manual focus, but it can be hard. One press here, just like I go in to, to ah, like to zoom. close yeah, yeah. on, yeah. do my focus Fine and then adjust. And the yeah. moment I press, it just go back to normal. Yeah, sure. So so. Yeah, and there's a few other settings, but these are the, no, that, the that, most important. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. I think. I think that's really, really useful, and um, and it, it is so different. Yeah, you know, I think it does depend on what type of photography you, you do, but to be able to have different settings, and you can set custom modes on most cameras as well. So you could go from maybe you could set up a landscape custom um, set of settings and a wildlife custom set yeah, of settings, yeah, yeah. which would be re really useful. Which is what I'm going to do. Um, Okay, so there's one other thing I want to talk about, which is um, a photo that you showed me of uh, a, a, a curlew, I think it is. Yeah. If we just look at this photo now, it is just amazing, a, a amazing photo. Thank you so much. Yeah, and, and, and it's a little bit different because I think a lot of people probably associate you with, with um, the Arctic and white photos, and certainly in, in, in last year's calendar, there was a lot of those, and, and what struck me with with your calendar this year, and I've, I've, I've seen some of the photos um, in it, which are just amazing, is there's, there's quite a few that that are just, um, there's more greenery, you know, yeah, yeah. and they're taken around here, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And that, uh, yeah, tell me a little bit are, more about that, yeah. this, this photo though, because it is stunning. <laughs> it's it's uh, two kilometers from, from, from I leave my, uh, my, yeah. my house here, yeah. and it's down the meadow, and I know uh, I do a lot of white photos, but I also, it's, it's I also like just, I. I photograph what I love and I just have something about the meadow. It's so quiet down there, it's so nice, it's so flat and simple. And then this morning, uh, the, the heavy rain came down yeah. and um, the, the, the little bird was sitting out there looking for worms, you know. Yeah. And suddenly you have the, 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 the bluish sky because the rain was coming in mm. and you had the, 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 the different colors in the, in the foreground yeah. and then the little bird. And then what I really love about it is just it's just that little thing is the rain. Yeah, and the, and, and, the, yeah. and the rain and capturing that that rain, that movement of the rain, was was just so nice because it just sets the scene, doesn't it? I mean, a lot of people probably think it's raining. I'm I'm not going to go out and photograph, but actually, it's a little bit like landscape photography in that respect. That sometimes when the when the weather's the worst is actually it could be windy and rainy. Yeah. That's when you can get the most dramatic yeah. shots. And I think, yeah, and all just what you talked about before, like, and I, and I, on purpose, I took three images that was taken very close to my home because I always say, like, uh, you don't have to travel to the end of the world to get good photos, and you know, and then I show pictures from from Ellesmere Island and Greenland. But I, on purpose, I wanted to bring these photos because they mean so much for me. Mm. You know how it is to photograph close to home. Mm. You do the same. Mm. You don't travel to the end of the world. No, no. You 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 also work like. Yeah, I love the, yeah. the woodlands around me. It's just amazing and. Yeah. And there's just, just always something to shoot. Yeah, yeah. I, I just thought these photos, uh, because they are close to my home, they're close to my heart, and they, they needed a place in the calendar. Yeah. I'm so glad you good. like it. And the other thing that was interesting was that rain, I thought it would be like a 40th of a second, but because you had such a long lens, and yeah. it was moving so quickly yeah. through the frame, yeah. it was about uh, 
uh, 500th or 250th or yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which was interesting from a, a technical point of view. But it, but I think it is important that because I think if you'd, if you'd have had a slower shutter speed, you yeah. wouldn't have caught that rain. And, yeah. and that is important to, and, to get and, that. And that, and, and that was a perfect example on why I used that looking fast because mm. normally I tend not to look too much because then I miss the yeah. photo. But here <clears throat> you have a... F a in wildlife photography, you get maybe a few seconds and the moment will never come back. Yeah. And I'm sitting, looking, taking a photo, but I'm not so skilled that I know exactly on this distance with that yeah. amount of rain. Yeah. And I take the photo and then because I can see the photo in the viewfinder, I just click fast change setting, click fast, and then there it's there. Yeah, it's really so, good for that. Su such, a good, such a good tip, that. Great. Well, it's been a fantastic few, few days. Of, of just, I literally <laughs> just want to go home and, and do some wildlife. But I think, I think what's really important f from, from my point of view is just how, by pushing my limits a little bit, and I did have doubts about doing this, actually, because I really wanted to try different things and push myself a little bit. And I had doubts when I was coming over here. I was thinking... Should I just be concentrating on landscape and not doing this? But now it's really inspired me um, to use animals and, and think about uh, you know nature a little bit differently. So when I've got that amazing shot, the cherry on top might be a sheep in it, or might be a deer in it, or might just be a bird, or might be a flock of geese flying over. You know, yeah. and that might make just a difference for one of my landscape shots. So it's been it's been really good. I hope it's not the last time. <laughs> no, I'm, sure. I'm I'm looking forward to get an invitation to your photo line if you are going to build one. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. I, well, I taught my daughter, and she's like, she's really excited now. So I don't think I'm going to get away with that. No, no that's good. <laughs> just need to lock my dog away. So yeah, yeah. can't wait to spend time there. Yeah, great. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching, everybody. And until next Sunday, bye.